Hey, hey peeps. So this video is a bit of a special one for a few reasons. Um, first and foremost, it's because it came as a request from Annika's youngest daughter, Robin. Hi, Robin, who wanted to learn how to paint glass. Um, and Annika asked me if I wouldn't mind doing a video to show my process so Robin can watch and possibly learn something and have a go at painting some glass herself. Uh, the second reason this video is special is because, well, yeah, if you didn't know, I paint glass as a hobby and I haven't really managed to do any videos covering this subject, although I have made a couple of um, art or DIY videos before on this channel, but it, yeah, it, it didn't really work out too brilliantly because I, I didn't have a tripod, so I, I really couldn't get a good angle on the camera and show what I was doing while I was doing it all too well. Um, so I have a tripod now and I can do that and I can share with you a hobby that I really enjoy doing and something that really sends me out other than uh, house plants. So that's why this video is special. Um, so what I have here are some, uh, I don't know, what would you call these jar glasses? Yeah, jar glasses. Um, and th they kind of look like a, a normal screw top jar, mason jar, whatever it is you want to call them with a handle. And I found these in the local supermarket. Uh, they were in the discount bin because they were either damaged or missing some pieces. Like this one is minute missing the um, cap and the straw. And the motifs that they came with were kind of scratched and damaged. So they were in the discount clearance bin. And I picked them up because I thought they were actually very unique and kind of cool looking. So I figured we would uh, try and do something with them. So I've already removed the motif on this one. We're not actually going to use this one. I just got it here for the example uh, of how it looked when I got them. So I'm just going to move that out of the way. And I've already, yeah taken off the uh, motif. I've already prepared it. Um, and I actually do have two um, to save a little bit of time. I've already started work on the second one. You can see I've decided to go with a citrus theme and I've got the line work already completed. And I've done this for several reasons off camera. One, to save time. Two, so I have a template to work from because, you know, I'm, I'm not going to bullshit you and say I do these things off the top of my head. I don't. It does take some planning. It does take a little bit of trial and error when I'm uh, sketching out the preliminary design. There's a lot of um, corrections. There's a lot of back and forth. There's a lot of um and ahhing on placements and, and the design itself. So I've gone ahead and I've done this off camera. And I'm going to be doing the same or a similar design or as close as possible on this one here. And once the line work is done on this one, then we can go to the painting and colouring stage. And that's when the glass work really takes on a life of its own, I find. I mean, it, it, it always looks a little bit rough and choppy in the line work phase, but that's just art. You've just got to fine tune and polish it. So, um, I'm just going to take this lid off, position the camera, and we can start getting the line work drawn with this marker pen, and my relief paint, and my correction alcohol. So we can get to work, and hopefully it's not too much of a shit show with uh, me drawing and sketching on video. I do get a little bit nervous, but... Eh, we'll see how this turns out. So I'm not sure if I'm going to um, speed this up or just do it real time. I think I might do a little bit of a mix of both, otherwise this video can go on for quite a, an excessive amount of time. And let's face it, you don't want to watch me doing it from start to finish in real time because, yeah, that's a little bit boring. And essentially, I'm guessing you want to see the finished result. So we're going to do a little bit in real time and then once I get into the flow of things 
I'll uh, speed things up or I'll do a cut or I'll see how the video process goes and what I decide to do in editing. But either way, let's let's get started. So, um, if I want to keep the pattern to the one I've already planned out as similar as possible, we're going to start with the handle on this side here. So, okay. I really hope I don't uh, make too many mistakes and have to go back and correct too much because that's going to be really tedious and I'm going to look like a dumbass. That's really going to be playing into my anxieties a little bit. And you can see already I've made a rough mistake, but it's okay. We can we can tidy that up. That's the beauty of working with glass. You can really uh, correct as you go. It's just a little bit awkward because of the medium. It's a lot more glidey and slippy than than paper or another sort of medium will be. Okay, so I've got a basic shape here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to tidy it up a little bit once the basic line work is done. And then I'm just gonna go over and do the, the correction. Now, there are several ways you can do this. Um, you can either do it like I'm doing it and um, do, it, do a design out of your head that you've already planned out or you can get a design that you just like the look of from Pinterest or something like that. Or you can get one of those um, free printouts like almost colour and sheet styles and just put it in the inside of the glass container if it fits and then trace it but whatever you choose to do no judgment it's uh, it's something for fun and that's what matters also a little bit of relaxation uh, this really relaxes me See, this is a good uh, example. I've just made a little bit of a planning whoopsie poopsie. So you can just take out the area where you've made the mistake and readjust accordingly. See, no biggie. This is really uh, why I enjoy working on glass. Nothing is really a permanent commitment in this stage. So it does make uh, the planning a lot more uh, pleasant and stress-free in that respect. Okay, so that's what I've got so far. That's my slice of lemon on the side. That 
this one, not this one here. Okay. Right. And also, uh, that's that's also the the nice way of um, planning it out, like I've done on the other one, because I can actually make some minor corrections of maybe something that I don't like how it turned out on the original. And I can maybe improve on it with the Mark II, so to speak. It's all part of the creative process. So. There's still a little bit of it. There we go, there's something stuck on it. That was just removing with my nail there. Don't know what that was. Maybe something from the uh, old paint design that I missed. So. If you hear any uh, weird noises in the background, that's just my dog Kinku. Sometimes he uh, makes these little rabid, cute noises, but that's just him being him. This is what I've got so far. Again, it always looks a little bit rough in the beginning, but you can always make your corrections as you go. And uh, of course, it won't look this rough as a finished result. Well, with the finished result, but yeah, you know. It's a process. Have some patience and just see how it unfolds. It's fine. And also, it's not like you're drawing to be photorealistic or anything like that. You're doing like these cute little doodle designs that work with uh, glass art and especially with the paint that I use you can't really do ultra realistic styles it's more that cute simple doodle design that you're going for here and besides the odd little imperfection here and there it just gives it that hand drawn handmade charm and some people like that I, I know I like that it's uh, it certainly is cute so uh, I'm just adding some leaves because um, it, it adds a nice little bit of a break to the citrus design and also it acts as a bit of a color break so it just makes the overall design that little bit more interesting and diverse So that's one side done. Now what I generally do is then I take my motif paint, by the way I'm not sponsored, uh, this is just the brands that I'm using, um, so you don't have to go exactly with what I'm using here, you can pick your brands of choice or what you, whatever it is you like to use or what's available to you, but that's uh, my marker and that's my paint uh, for the for the line work 
So what I do here is once I get to one side, because I can't really flip it and put it that side because of the um, handle, and if I put my hand over it, I'm just going to start smudging away my line work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my relief paint and I'm going to put down the permanent line work and then I'm going to have to wait for that to dry. This is what the pain in the ass thing and what can take um, so long with this process is the drying times because you have to do it in stages. Um, this isn't a rush. This isn't a race. This is just how you have to do it. Um, and this is generally why I work on more than one thing at a time because while you're waiting for one to dry, you've got something else to do providing you don't have to go away and do something completely different. So this is how I do it. It's fine. Okay, so I have both glasses completely finished with the permanent line work. There they are. So what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, put some colour on them. And this is always the fun part because, uh, as I said before, it's when the glass really starts coming into its own and coming to life and stuff. And yeah, it's always uh, my favourite part of the process. So uh, let's get started. So uh, we're going to start with uh, citrus yellow. If uh, it will focus, there we go. Lemon yellow, why not? Seeing as we're uh, painting lemons. Now the thing is because this um, Let's put this uh, lid back on because this uh, paint is quite liquid. I don't know if you can see that from in there, but it's very runny, very liquidy, almost like water consistency. Uh, we're going to have to wait for uh, it to dry before we can move on to different parts of the glass because it's at a curve and we don't want um, the paint to start running and dripping everywhere. So. This is always a, a challenging part. Obviously you won't have this issue if you're using the opaque paints, which are um, a lot more easier to control. So they're not runny, they're, uh, they behave more like traditional 
acrylic paints. So once you put them down, that's it, they stay there. But with this, no, it's it's all quite runny and quite a, a balancing act to get everything how you want it without everything running everywhere. So this also plays into having some patience when you're doing glass painting, especially if you want the, uh, the stained glass effect. But the result is always worth it, so yeah.
So there you have it. Three and a half to four hours of work over a couple of days. And we have ourselves some fun and funky summer jar glasses. I hope you learned something, Robin, and you give it a go. And if you do, I can't wait to see what it is you managed to create. Um, and for anyone else that watched to the end, thanks for watching. As always, it's much appreciated. Much love. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.